All right, folks, uh, when it comes to politics, you've often seen political action committees, but they have not been run, organized by us. That has actually changed on Tuesday. The collective political action committee played a huge role in campaigns nationwide, not just the Virginia governor's race, but also in other state races, in local races, city council races, uh, uh, mayoral races. Joining us right now is a co-founder of uh, a Black Pack. He's called the director. He and his wife founded the collective political action committee. Uh, Quentin James uh, joining us out of Cleveland. Quentin, how are you doing? I'm good, Roland. Thank you so much for having uh, us. Doing great. Also got our panel here. We got uh, A. Scott Bolden uh, just to my left, okay, who's over the uh, National Bar Association Political Action Committee. Uh, and again, Janice Mathis, Angela Saylor, Derek Holly, also with Project 21. Quentin, uh, I'll start this way. Um, you've worked on campaigns. Y'all worked inside of campaigns, and it's sort of been the exact same thing. Black folks fighting for attention, trying to fight for resources. And finally, y'all said to hell with that. Uh, we got to start our own to fund our own. Exactly. Uh, you know, when we look at what happened with Citizens United, uh, we've seen a wave over the past few cycles of tons of money being flooded into the system. Unfortunately, that hasn't been the same way with in terms of black donors and black candidates. And so what we have is a whole infrastructure of amazing talent uh, who lack resources. And more than likely, they are, you know, calling and begging white donors to fund their campaigns. And unfortunately, um, sometimes that, you know, leaves our community uh, not at the forefront in terms of policy priorities um, and, and, you know, hiring decisions and that kind of stuff. And so you're right. We said, like, let's put our own resources behind our own candidates. And so uh, we've been doing this work for about a year now and had some great successes um, in Virginia and all across the country uh, this past Tuesday. And also those black candidates uh, are obviously extremely thankful because what folks don't realize, uh, most black candidates don't raise a lot of money. Right, no, exactly. Um, you know, if we even look at Barack Obama, everyone looks at, you know, the Obama campaigns. Obama got outraised in both elections. People like need to remember that, um, even in a juggernaut as, as what he built with his campaign. And so when you talk about, you know, city council, school board, um, these candidates are struggling to find resources. And so, you know, when folks are able to fund their campaigns, given five, ten, twenty five dollars, it makes a huge difference in their ability to go out and talk to voters and, you know, uh, eventually win their races. Question. Oh, well, Quentin, congratulations to you and your wife in, in terms of um, what you're doing. I think it's you. awesome. You know, and a, a, big, a big issue was always funding. And mm -hmm. um, you all being able to bring those funds together and put boots on the ground is outstanding. Anita Estelle uh, is talking about a Rosa pack. Um, right. that will also engage both sides of the aisle, which I think mm -hmm. is also an awesome, awesome opportunity because, I mean, when you look at industry, business has a pack, the Jews have a pack, the Hispanics mm -hmm. have a pack, and so black people need to have packs as well that are dealing with both sides of the aisle and one side of the aisle for candidates in order to really, really embolden ourselves with power. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, you know, that that's one piece of, of kind of a difference that we have. And there are great um, kind of black packs that are starting to form and doing great work. You mentioned black pack earlier, Roland. Uh, there's Higher Heights for America, who does a lot of great work. Um, Color of Change pack, uh, the CBC pack. So, you know, we're starting to see the infrastructure being built out on our side. Um, but in terms of our priorities, I mean, we actually prioritize progressive issues. Every one of our candidates uh, fills out a 45 question, you know, questionnaire. And we ask them things about, you know, defunding and, and, and demilitarizing the police, uh, asking them about the fight for 15 and how do we raise wages um, for, for uh, you know, workers uh, when it comes to education, when it comes to, the, you know, the environment. We want to get a whole kind of picture of where our candidates stand before we go in um, to, you know, give them resources and tell our members to, to fund their campaigns. Scott? Yeah, Quentin, uh, congratulations again. I know you and I have talked before, and you know, one mm -hmm. of the, the secrets of this collective pack is that you've motivated really a number of groups, including Black Lawyers and NBA's pack that I currently mm -hmm. chair. Can you talk about how, and, put, and we focus on federal races, can you talk right. about how uh, you get resources into these races because it's not just money uh it's it's education programs it's also mm -hmm. boots on the ground you name it can you talk a little bit about that 
Yeah, no, that's a, a great point, Scott. And thank you for all the great work you're doing. And, um, you know, we're, we're looking forward to working with you even more in 2018. Absolutely. Um, so, so, so we think uh, about the, the races in a few ways. We go out and recruit candidates. We train candidates and then we fund and support them. So on the training front, in the very beginning, we go through campaign mechanics, you know, A to Z, how to run campaigns, who to hire in terms of your consultants, making sure that the the mail vendors and TV vendors are also, you know, uh, if not black, people of color at least, because um, we want to have some diversity in those kind of areas. Um, but when it comes to the actual work on the, the ground with the campaigns, I mean, we are, you know, getting them a sample communication um, uh, messages. We are, you know, helping them in terms of getting them technology. Uh, we were able to do sure. some texting uh, programs for voters all around the country. And so introducing our candidates to mm -hmm. this kind of new uh, portal of tools that folks are using to contact voters and mm -hmm. to get their message out there more effectively um, is, is what we do when we come in. So y you're right. It's it's not just the money, but it's also the resources. You know, it's mm -hmm. it's connecting them to Roland Martin to get them on, on TV to elevate their races. I mean, it's the little things that we can do um, to help each and every one of these candidates around the country. All right, Quentin, we certainly appreciate it, man. Thank you so very much. Tell you why, Stephanie, what's up? Thank you so much, Roland. All right, thanks a lot. Derek, bottom line is here. Black folks have to be in control of our politics. Otherwise, uh, we are then begging somebody else on our issues. I couldn't agree with you more. And the thing about it is I applaud Quentin for what he's doing and all his other black packs because here's the thing. Even you look at what, what Donna Brazil said in her, in her book, a lot of what she talked about was due to she didn't have the ability to spend money to, for, the, for the party. And a lot of times I, I look at what happens with uh, with politics in terms of what, what is spent. And we, I would say the, the media, particularly black media, does each candidate a disservice in terms of economics. Because when you look at what they spend on, on radio and in ads, black media does not get their share in terms of what they should get with the, with the ad spend. Yeah, because well, because what they want from black media, they just, just like black staffers, they want black folks to volunteer mm. uh, and not actually get paid to be, to be on campaign. Sure, but not only that, when you look at some of the, uh, the the personalities on the air, they bash other parties so badly that the some the Democratic Party does not have to spend money, and they just rely. Okay, we just expect black voters to vote Democrat. So, because the uh, take for example personalities on FM radio or or uh, urban radio stations. They, they constantly bash the Republican Party. But here's the deal, though. I'll, I'll, they I'll, bash the Republicans. Yeah, but, but I'll, they, they bash the Republican Party. No, 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 one second, one second, one second, one second. They do. Here's the, here's the, but no, they no, don't no, have no, to no. spend. But here's the deal, though, is what Janet said earlier. Black folks are not bashing a party. Black folks are speaking to our issues. And if you do not, if you do not align with our issues, you are going to get checked. And this is the, and here's the fundamental issue that I keep making to Republicans. I literally sat at the Republican National Committee sure. uh, uh, lunchroom, whatever, whatever, what's the building y'all have? The Democrats Capitol. got one too, okay? The yeah, the Capitol Club. <laughs> I sat there, Ryan Priebus was right here, Sean Spicer was right here, and I said, let me be real clear with y'all. If you come to black people with that voter far crap, you're gonna get your behind kick. If you come to black people not dealing with criminal justice reform, you're gonna get your behind kick. If you come to black people attacking affirmative action, you're gonna get your behind kick. I laid out, I said, now, if you come to black people making an economic argument that we understand, I said, it's going to be a different conversation. If you come to black people with an education conversation, it's different. I said, but if you do not speak to these issues, it does not matter what come out your mouth, you're going to get your behind kicked. I agree and you know with what you happened? Rowan. I agree with Rice you, Rice Priebus came on Tom Jordan Morning Show, and you know what he did? <laughs> came waving the Republican flag okay. and came with voter fraud and got his behind whooped. I got that, and I agree with you. But at the same time, they still do not spend the, the, the amount of you, money on urban stations. Bash. I got you. I got you. And, and they don't have to because but, they bash other, the candidates But again, so they, that they, they don't, they don't to speak spend. to black issues. Right. So again, though, I got to go to a break, but this is very simple. If you don't talk to black people about what Agreed. we care about, Agreed. you're going to get jacked. Agreed. And so I'm just saying, so Angela knows it. And trust me, she been telling the party. Her husband, Elroy, been telling the party. I know all, I they, know. All, they all been telling the party. So <laughs> why don't you, you tell the party, folks? I'm y'all might want, them. No, y'all. And guess what? <laughs> they them. might want to start listening You're to the black people right. in their party. You're absolutely. Right. Wait, hold on. Eight days on TV One. I will never lie to you. Oh, my God. Oh.
Roland Martin. He doesn't want to talk to us. He wants to ignore us. Uncensored. Hell no! no. That ain't gonna cut it, boo. Unapologetic. No, no, that, that is fundamentally false. You are wrong. Unfiltered. He wants an America where we all look alike. He ain't talking about black people. Unrelenting. You better go work out, because you got to fight on your hands. News One Now with Roland Martin, weekdays at 7 a.m. on TV One.